Uh, welcome to Learning Space. I am Nicole Gallucci, postdoc with CosmoQuest. Um, uh, this is our weekly show on all things astronomy, education, and outreach, uh, space, learning, sharing, space, all kinds of fun topics along those lines. Uh, so thanks for joining us again. I have with me my co-host, Georgia Bracey. Hi there. Hello. Hello. Uh, and we are joined by Alice Olmsted. Hello. Hi. Uh, so I have a sign. We, oh, yes. We have an analog lower third, so <laughs> y'all can uh, see that. Uh, <laughs> if anyone knows how to make lower third work on a mobile device, uh, let us know. Otherwise, <laughs> that is awesome. That is awesome. Hey, hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to Learning Space. Oh, there's an echo, Georgia. Georgia, I'm getting an echo from your side. OK, how's that? Uh, I think that's better. I'll let you know. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Um, okay, so I'll uh, let you guys know to um, share the link, uh, and uh, we thank you for that. Uh, also, if you want to comment, you can comment on the event page on Google Plus where this is airing, um, and any place shared from that should show up as well um, in our comment tracker. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can leave a comment there, and we'll be watching the YouTube stream as well. Uh, comment tracker does not pick up the Twitter feed automatically, but I will be keeping an eye on the learning space hashtag if you want to leave us a comment, leave us a question, whatever. Uh, let us know what's going on. Um, just got a, a comment from Charles Bell on the event page about some breaking news, uh, which I we will definitely cover this story in the Weekly Space Hangout on Friday, but a quick mention is that um, the uh, NASA's infrared telescope, the WISE mission, has been put back into service to look for near Earth asteroids. So, yay, protecting the planet. That, that, that news just broke all over Twitter, the Twitter sphere. So, uh, thank you, Charles, for that notification. And uh, we'll cover that on, on Friday for sure. Uh, I can't imagine talking about, you know, having a big asteroid story and, and not having Fraser, Fraser Kane want to talk about it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, on to the main topic for today's show. Uh, we are talking to Alice about Astrobytes, which is a popular astronomy blog. See, Astro... Uh, yeah, hold on again. <laughs> Astrobytes. Uh, <laughs> you can check out the website at uh, astrobytes.com. Uh, I've got a link in the on the event page as well. We'll put it in the show notes, too. Um, so, Alice, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, what it is you do, where you are, what your position is, and um, and then tell us a little bit about Astrobytes. Sure. So, I'm a fourth-year graduate student in astronomy at the University of Maryland. Um, I am sort of in a weird place right now, so I decided to do education research instead of normal, normal astronomy research. <laughs> um, so I'm in a, in a little bit of a transition right now. Um, cool, very cool. Figuring that stuff out. But before that, I was studying galaxies and star formation and gravitational lensing and all this really awesome stuff. Yeah. Um, but as far as astrobytes, so I started writing with, for astrobytes about a year after the whole thing got started. So it's a blog that's for undergraduates. Um, most of our posts are summarizing literature from the astronomy journals at a level that's more appropriate for um, undergraduate physical science majors, so people who are interested in astronomy you know, might want to go into that themselves, but are still very intimidated by the astronomical literature, which can be really, really dense to go through. Yeah. I think all of the authors have sort of experienced that, and that's been a big drive for why the site was created. Um, so I just sort of emailed them at one point and said, hey, I'd like to write with you guys. And at that point, it was a little informal, so they basically said, OK. And I started writing for them for a year nice. and a half. Um, mm -hmm. So we have about 30 grad students at a time. Everyone yeah. writes one post a month, uh, all volunteer. And it's just yeah, sort of digesting the astronomical <laughs> news and <laughs> writing it in a way that's much you know, easier for people to access. So I just got myself into that, and it's been really fun. Um, writing and editing other people's stuff. And that's cool. awesome. How long does it take to read a paper and, and write, write up the post for you, for you, you typically? Uh, uh, for me, probably a couple of days, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. depending on how fast I'm being. So I can usually mm -hmm. write it in a day and then have another day to edit it, and that, usually, that tends to be enough. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it takes some time. Um, I've gotten faster over <laughs> the, the year and a half. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah, How do you guys right. choose the paper that you're going to write about? So uh, for me, I well, originally I would just comb through the archive, the whole archive myself, and for the last week or so beforehand, and look for things that 
Um, basically, I'd find a paper that I could, I knew why it was interesting. Um, mm -hmm. So if I could read sort of the introduction and the conclusions and say in a couple sentences, like, this is why the paper is exciting and this is why the paper is important, then I would usually write about it. Um, as I got lazier, sometimes I would go on Vox Charta, which is the online voting site for the archive. Um, so this is something that the University of Maryland uses for our Astro PH discussion. Oh, um, what is this called? I'm not. It's uh, Vox Charta, V O X C H A R T A. Vox Charta. Yeah. But yes, so you can see if you click, um, you know, you can go to your institution, but you can also see votes from all institutions that are using this site. And so that's one way that I can find out what other people think are interesting and that week if I don't have time to go through the whole archive. And I sometimes pick from there. Can you um, explain, so uh, what, what archive is uh, yes, and, and so, what Astro PH is for, for yes, some of our listeners? That was a little jargony. No, um, <laughs> <laughs> I realized that while I was saying it. But no, so the archive is just where people post um, their own papers. So sometimes people wait until their papers are uh, approved by the journal, so you send in a paper, it gets refereed, you edit it, and then you know you eventually get it approved by the journal. So some people will wait until it's approved, and some people will just do it as soon as they send it to the editor. Um, it's kind of a personal preference thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I also usually try to look for things that have already been uh, vetted mm -hmm. by the referee before I write something about it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so there's just a huge influx of papers. I mean, there's at least 50 papers probably a day go up there, so it's a lot for everyone to read. Um, so yeah, this is just where everyone pulls from is looking at the archive. Um, and AstroPH is just the server, I guess, that has all the papers on it. Yeah, yeah, that's the astronomy specific ones, because there's a right. bunch of physics topics that are not astronomy as well. Right. Um, and the neat thing about archive, so archive is A-R-X-I-V, um, it is, uh, all of these papers are available for, you know, for free. They're not behind a paywall because they're technically preprints. It's before it's ready for journal, um, although it's, it's the same journal quality stuff. Uh, so, so, um, it's, it's really good if you, you know, it is, it is technically accessible, but whether or not the language is accessible is another story. Uh, Charles Bell, uh, comments. Uh, those astronomy journals are tough reading. I wish they could each do a video and explain it in their <laughs> own words. <laughs> <What do> you... <laughs> yeah, that would be great. I saw something. I, f I wish I remembered which school did this, but I know some school does like uh, videos when their grad students publish papers, and they'll do a little like five minute video of their grad students talking about the paper. Oh, okay. Um, it's this... called like Coffee Talk or something. So if you Google that, you might figure out what institution. Um, talk astronomy. Interesting. Uh, there's astronomy coffee at OSU. I don't think that's the same one. <laughs> 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 um, I I do remember this idea coming up during the uh, Hack Day event at the last at the last mm -hmm. winter astronomical uh, American Astronomical Society meeting. Um, I don't know if it went forward, but some people were talking about doing that. Uh, yeah, I think there's an Astro Better post about this. I That's probably where I read it. <laughs> okay, Astro Better is another <laughs> another really great blog. Uh, it's written by astronomers, kind of about the profession of astronomy and and ways to improve the field. Um, so, so yeah, j j check that out too if you're interested. <laughs> um, okay. okay, so. Uh, about so you, you said you have about thirty writers at um, Astrobytes. Um, yes. And I remember the site going live early on, and you guys got a big bump from bad astronomer Phil Plate, and so that was that was uh, pretty cool. What is your main driver of traffic? Um, so Phil Plate is still probably our biggest uh, <laughs> was our biggest bump. I try to remember everything was on the poster that I just did, um, but sometimes like other like web references, um, Twitter, um, we just started a Tumblr actually, which is oh. new, so yes, yeah, so we started a Tumblr of astronomy plots, like famous astronomy plots and describing them, um, so that should hopefully draw in some people, uh, but some of it's word of mouth, and a lot of our readers are not undergraduates, so it was designed mm -hmm. to be for undergraduates, but a lot of our readers ended up being you know, research scientists and other graduate students who don't have time to read the whole archive themselves, um, right. or who just want to, you know, hear about a couple papers every week. Um, right. So that's actually our main, you know, group of people is, is more graduate students and, and researchers, um, which is kind of nice. 
Do you track which um, blog posts get you know the most hits or like your most popular posts or most popular papers that have been written about? Anything like that? Yeah. Well, most of our most popular posts will be like the career. Uh, kind of talk. So sometimes, you know, our everyday posts are summarizing these astronomical papers, but we'll also have posts about like how to go to a conference or, you know, mm -hmm. I wrote a post when I decided to switch into education, like about making that decision. And okay. so those posts end up being very, very popular. Mm -hmm. um, I think those are our top hits. Okay. Or there was one that was like the top 10 papers of 2012 or something that was really popular to you. Like these, you know, sort of big draw things. Okay. Um, but we can see all the statistics of what, what people are doing. Um, so. And how many readers do you have a sense of regular readers? Um, I'm not sure about number of readers. I know our page views is about 30,000 page views a month. Wow. Um, so it's pretty good. And that's just from the people who actually go to the site. So it's probably a bit more than that because a lot mm -hmm. of people read it on their RSS feeds mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. Um, so I don't right. remember a number of viewers. <laughs> I should, but I know. A little hard to track. Yeah, yeah. Um, Guido Bibra, hello, uh, says, yes, he has to admit, Astrobytes is indeed rather heavy reading for non-scientists. Uh, some topics I can follow, some not. But sometimes I find something interesting that captivates me. So that's pretty cool. It's going, um, even though, like you said, all your, your reader poll showed you that a lot of your readers were grad students and researchers. There's uh, undergrads reading it and uh, just people in the public as well who are, who are enjoying it, so that's pretty cool mm -hmm. there too. Yeah, um, and I think some educators also tend to read it, so people who are doing, you know, astronomy education or like high school yeah. education, you know, people who have a little bit of a background, I, that's another chunk of readership. Do you think that, that Astrobytes is a good way for undergrads to get into um, the field or to, to start to understand how scientific papers work or are written? Um, definitely. I mean, I think that's the main goal of the site is to do that, to help people, you know, read some papers with some help and get background, and then they can hopefully go out on their own and read these papers by themselves. Um, so even if they find a paper that hasn't been summarized by us, there's so many posts up right now that you can go and search for a topic, and you can start to get an idea of what that topic yeah. is like yeah. um, just by reading our posts. Yeah. So we well, hope that that's what it's doing for the undergrads who are reading it. <laughs> Okay. Well, I bet writing for it is actually a really good experience. Do you guys talk to each other and get a sense of, you know, what you're learning about writing papers by actually writing about the papers? Um, so I actually, it's funny for me, I haven't actually met most of the people who write for Astrobytes in person. Oh, interesting. Because okay. we do everything online. Yeah. So for okay. me, it's kind of weird. Like, I don't, there's only a couple people that I've really met. Um, but the ones who I do met, who I do know, you know, have had that experience where it definitely helped me as a writer to be much more proficient yeah. and much better at explaining things yeah. um, without all this jargon. <laughs> um, I know a bunch of people did get together, so there was a communicating science conference, uh, ComSciCon, yeah. that some of the people at Harvard organized, and I couldn't go, but a lot of the Astrobytes people were there, and some other um, science graduate students went, and that was a really good thing. I think that will probably happen again at some point. Okay. Um, so yeah, that was just, you know, writing workshops and they had a bunch of guest speakers come and talk about how science journalism and how to get into it. And I think it was really good. So wow. I'm sad I couldn't go. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I saw that advertised when uh, first came out, ComSciCon, uh, and, and I was very sad because it, it sounded like a great thing that I would have done as a grad student and I had just stopped being a grad student. So it was like, <laughs> oh no! So I sent it to all my, my friends at, at University of Virginia. Um, who, who did that as well, so that sounds like that. Um, it, it's part of um, a, almost a growing movement among, you know, grad students, uh, undergrads, young professionals in astronomy, getting more interested in communication and, and education. Um, maybe, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I think, like, I, I see that too. Like, I think with social media too, I think it's, it's you know, this young people thing to be on social media, and I think maybe that's <laughs> driving a little bit of the outreach idea too, but I definitely feel like the younger generation is more into outreach than maybe some of the older generation, and I think that's great. I mean, I hope that continues the way it's going. Oh, I just found the link for Astroplots. Astroplots, yes, our new thing. This is as of like last month. So this is um, one of a, the, an undergrad student at BU emailed us, Boston University, to say like, hey, what if you guys did a Tumblr with plots? Mm -hmm. um, and so, sorry. 
Oh, that that's fine. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, so this was just someone's suggestion, and people took it up. You know, we have a our listserv is really active. So when you email the Astrobytes, you know, internal listserv, usually someone will take up whatever task you want very quickly. Um, <laughs> so this just happened. Like it just made itself. Um, oh so wow, you've got the fun. the classic Hubble plot. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Showing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, showing distance and velocity. There you go. So that's that's straight up astronomy history right there. Yep. That's really exciting. Okay, I'll share the link to that as well. So that's astrobytes.tumblr.com. Yes. Um, and so those are look like little shorter um, examples um, as far as the writing goes. And so that is something that could be shared a little bit more easily, maybe. Yeah. Um, have you found uh, any, have there been anything about, um, Doing journal clubs virtually. I know this is a, this is a topic I've heard about. Is this something that Astrobytes has been getting involved in? Um, I don't know if any of us are involved in doing that. I mean, okay. I know those things exist. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, we have our journal club at Maryland, which is totally separate from Astrobytes, so. though. Right. But it's still right. convenient for me because I can say if I don't have time to read papers, I can just look at the you know, five from Astrobytes for the week and say, oh, I'll talk about this one. <laughs> <laughs> that is very helpful. Um, but right. I don't know much about the virtual journal clubs. Okay. Um, but I think, yeah, Astrobytes is, we have a pretty good range of what, you know, science people are expert in and what science will write about. Um, so I think, yeah, we, we cover a lot of stuff. Hopefully a broad range of things for people. Do you have any trouble getting people to participate and, and write for you? And how do you, is it kind of word of mouth? Do people kind of hear about it and then just want to help um, out? <laughs> it's been, well, it was word of, word of mouth for a while. So I was one of the last couple of people who just volunteered and got grandfathered in. Um, and then we realized we had so many authors that we needed to have like an actual hiring process. Oh, so wow. we're, at, we're in the process of that now. So people can write for two years and then you sort of retire. Um, you need so, to write your you thesis are, and graduate. <laughs> um, so we just had one of those. So we're doing a hiring call for October, and we're emailing all the uh, graduate programs. So we're starting to do that right now, just sort of getting the word out to um, recruit graduate students. So, oh, cool. So hopefully right. we'll get a bunch of new people. We did that uh, a few months ago, and that was really successful. So. <laughs> Okay, so what are you going to look for? Do they have to send like a little writing sample or? Yeah, so they it? they basically just write an astrobite. Um, they do what? Okay. So yeah, they they'll write their own astrobite and then write about why they want to do it. You know, a little typical personal statement kind of thing. Okay. Um, explaining what they want to do. Yeah. But I think that the main task is just writing the astrobite, getting it out there, and then you know if we hire them, then they can just use that as their first post. Okay. That's really cool. And there's no, I, I, I'm, I'm assuming here, there's no financial benefit to, to writing for Astrobytes. Right? <laughs> there's no financial benefit whatsoever. There's not even free food involved, which there's is like the currency of grad free. school. <laughs> <laughs> but you get something interesting to put on your CV, and, I, and you get the um, experience as well. I mean, this is really good educational experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think it's really fun, and everyone I talk to, is, it's just a great thing to be able to talk about, you know, doing this outreach stuff, and... Well, you guys have a all wide audience. Or some, <laughs> you need a conference or something and have a big Astrobite party. Yeah, I mean, pretty much we are. Oh. Usually, some of us are at every double AS, so you know, whoever's there will meet each other. So I've met a couple of people that way. I mean, I met uh, Susanna. I guess we had met at one double AS, and then we were both at the Astronomical Society the Pacific meeting, and so we met again. Um, so yeah, we tend to we tend to gravitate towards each other when we can. <laughs> yes, yes, very important. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a favorite post that either you've written or that somebody else has written that was really insightful or weird? Um, I think the favorite thing that I've written, if I can be egotistical, um, <laughs> so I think my favorite thing to write was one about confirming general relativity on the sun, um, which was just okay. fun because I had no idea going into the writing this paper, like, anything about the topic. Like, I barely know about GR, you know, I've never taken a GR class. Um, it's, you know, solar, spectroscopy, stuff that I'm really not used to. Um, so I had to do a lot of background to get this post together, but I had, the paper just grabbed me. Like, it seemed really interesting mm -hmm. that these people had verified GR on the side. I was like, we haven't done that yet? Like, when mm -hmm. did we discover GR? So it seemed like this really cool, you know, confirmation um, that came, you know, much after GR was, came about. 
Uh, so yeah, I went and I did all this reading and I sort of put things together and that was really fun to write and I think it turned out well and I had a much better sense at the end of it like how people did this. Um, so that was that was probably my favorite thing to write. It took more time than the other posts, but I just happened yeah. to have that time and so I said I'm going to go and I'm going to learn how this works. Um, yeah, challenging. Cool. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Great. That is really cool. Um, trying to think of any other. Um, want to do a little station identification. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, uh, please let us know in the YouTube comments. If you're watching on YouTube, on the uh, comment thread at Google uh, Google Plus. Yes, on the Google Plus event page, um, or on Twitter. If you are using the hashtag Learning Space, I will be checking that periodically as well. Uh, so Charles Bell just plugged Astrobytes on the Facebook fan page for Comets and Asteroids, which has almost 4,000 fans. So yay. Thank you. Um, and oh, we have a comment from from Grepoan on YouTube. I'm a grad student at UMD2, and I like to read Astrobytes because the esoteric nature of each subfield is still bewildering to <laughs> other astronomers outside those subfields. That is so, so true. <laughs> Yeah, just doing research in astronomy doesn't mean you understand the jargon of, of another subfield of yeah, astronomy. That was really yeah. amazing to me too. It's you, you do get a glimpse as to how much is out there and nobody knows it all, you know. It's mm -hmm. just it's wild. It's wild. Yeah. You think when you enter grad school that you'll understand everything about astronomy <laughs> once you get your degree, but no. That's no. just not true. No. It's how much you don't know. <laughs> yes. That is what grad school teaches you. <laughs> How much you don't know. You don't know things. You need to, yeah. I, I remember th them telling us that we needed to at least be able to, you know, go to any colloquium, uh, any of the astronomy colloquia, and, and, you know, follow mostly what's going on. <laughs> like, that was their, their goal, which hopefully people are using much more colloquial language in talks, although that's not always the case. Um, there, yeah, there's a lot of jargon in talks as well. Um, yeah. So, question that just flew from my mind. Oh. <laughs> so, Alice, you oh. talked about jargon a lot, right? So, I that guess that's probably, <laughs> probably a big part of when you're writing one of these is, is trying to make the jargon go away and replace it with something more um, clear. Is there anything else, you know, that you typically find yourself doing when you sit down and you write one of these things? Any other things that you know would make it a good post for people to read? Um, I try to be really selective about what I take from the body of the paper, um, which sounds kind of terrible to say it that way, but, um, you know, I really, I look at the introduction to see how they're setting up the background science, and I look at their conclusions to make sure I understand, like, what really happened in the paper and what they want people to take away, and I'm usually pretty sparse with, you know, the middle stuff, just because <laughs> that's really dense for people, and, mm -hmm. you know, most of the main information should be reiterated in the conclusion anyways. Um, so I try to take, you know, a couple of plots to make it, you know, more scientific and explain the methods, but I really try to shy away from, you know, spending a lot of time explaining this really detailed uh, stuff about what's happening in the post. A good post has to, you know, grab people and make it seem like it's exciting, but also just, like, really get at the main point. Like, whenever I read a paper, it's like, what is the main point? What is the author trying to say? Um, and then the other stuff, the details come later. Yeah, yeah. So do you find yourself taking out a lot of the math from the Oh, math? definitely. Yeah. yeah. I some people are a little more mathy when they write posts. I never I don't think I put any math into my posts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> plots, yes. Post. Yes. <laughs> plots, yes. Some people then, would like I don't that. think I put Not an everybody. equation in. <laughs> So do you have like a LaTeX editor in, in WordPress to do equations? Or? <laughs> you can do well the LaTeX is okay, or you can do HTML oh, okay. characters. Okay. Well, the LaTeX sense. looks a little funny sometimes, but people do it anyways. <laughs> do you have a favorite um, or maybe least favorite piece of astronomy jargon that you've either come across in writing one of these posts or tried to explain in one of your posts? Ooh, that's a tough question. I mean, I hate that people use so many acronyms. I try to not use the acronyms, just like, no, unless it's really, really necessary. Like, even yeah. something like AGN, you know, Active Galactic Nucleus, everyone uses it, and I, when I write, unless it's a post about AGN in which I'm saying it every other sentence, then I try to write out the full thing. Okay. Um, so that's what I've had to use, is just like, 
ID acronym things <laughs> when I can. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, and looking at the popular topics, it looks like um, if you look at the little uh, tag cloud, observations seems to be really popular. So there's, is there more observation than theoretical? Um, and then exoplanets seems to be a very popular topic as well. Which, what, what, what topics do you tend to focus on? Are you kind of all over the place? Um, well, since I did research on galaxies, I would tend to go toward the galaxy evolution side of things. Mm -hmm. So, and usually observation. I don't know if I've written about a theory paper. I hope I have at some point. Um, <laughs> but yeah, a lot of sort of, you know, that's sort of my fallback because, you know, writing these things, sometimes it's great to explore other parts of astronomy, and I like doing that, but it's also helpful for me as a researcher to go into my own field and just go a little bit away from what I'm doing because you mm -hmm. get so, so narrow really fast when you start doing mm -hmm. research that I just wanted to get a little broader background in the topics that I was actually doing. And so that ended up being galaxy evolution for the most part, or star formation, or things like that for me. Mm -hmm. um, so it's helping my research a lot, because I actually had better background for the stuff that I was doing. That's great. Um, That's great. Um, so what kind of, can I ask what kind of education research you're thinking about going into? Sure. Um, so what the project that I'm proposing to do, we'll see what happens. Um, I, I guess. When I decided to transition, I saw that a lot of the education research literature that I would read um, wasn't really propagated in the classes that I'd taken. Mm -hmm. And so my big question was, why aren't astronomy education researchers communicating with astronomy educators? Like, why okay. is that not coming together? Um, yeah. So yeah. that turned into, we want to look at uh, professional development workshops for faculty to see how effective those are, because that's the place where these two groups sort of collide. Um, so that's what we would like to do is sort of go into this a little bit and see what, what's happening in communication and what faculty are really learning at these workshops and if it's enough to uh, help them in their classes. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, that's definitely needed is, is the implementation of all the good stuff that, that's coming out. Um, Have you started to do some of that? Yet, Alice? A little bit. So we wrote a, a little like mini proposal about what we would like to do, so sort of how we would evaluate the workshops, which is basically okay. seeing how well the workshop presenters are teaching, um, and then doing surveys for the faculty. Um, so I have, you know, my committee, like Ed Prather is on my committee, everyone sort of knows who he is, and mm -hmm. uh, Joe Reddish is at the, in the right. physics department here. So I've got some people, and uh, we put together the best we can for a plan. But since it's a weird thing that no one has done an astronomy education thesis at Maryland, um, I can't really go too far until the faculty say it's OK. OK. That's really exciting. You're really blazing a new path there. That's, that's really cool. Adventurous. It is an adventure. It is definitely an adventure. <laughs> Um, so we saw you, your poster at um, the Astronomical Society of the Pacific meeting, so ASP, trying to not use, <laughs> trying to say the word before I use the acronym. Um, so what uh, kind of interactions did you have there with the, the Astrobytes poster, and did you get uh, any interesting feedback from people at the conference? Um, so I was actually, I was a little bit surprised, this might come off as weird, but I was a little surprised at how many people didn't, hadn't heard of us. Oh. So because it's, you know, an educator's conference, we thought that, oh, well, everyone already knows who we are, so most of our feedback will be, you know, more high level. But a lot of people I talk to are like, I haven't heard of this, I'm going to go look at it. So I guess we haven't reached all the astronomy outreach and education people yet. Oh, that's uh, interesting. Yeah. How yeah. Do, you, do, you, do you find that at AAS meetings, too, or is it more people have heard of you? I mean, AAS meetings are hugely overwhelming sometimes, but... Um... Yeah, well, I can't say too much, because I haven't been to AAS for astrobytes before, okay. so... The last at AAS I was at was when I started Astrobytes, so I okay. met a couple people there, but um, I, I wasn't there as much. But I, my sense is that, you know, that's really publicizing us and people haven't heard of us as much at AAS. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure a larger fraction of the people at the ASP meeting had heard of us, but we definitely, I talked to a lot of people who were like, oh, I should check that out, that sounds cool. Okay. Um, so we reach new people and that's oh, great. <laughs> you should do a little survey and see how people first heard of you, those that have and that read and I can't remember how I first heard of you but I've actually been getting the um, the email you know of the daily astro bite post in my um, inbox for a couple of years um, oh, nice. and it might have been Phil Plate I that's my that's my guess I found yeah. out before he did like like two minutes <laughs> before he did but still I think 
So, yeah, we heard that, about it around the same time. I can claim that. <laughs> yeah. Well, that pie that pie chart was on my poster, but I'm having yeah. trouble visualizing it right now. And I remember, remember it Phil too. Plate was a large piece of it. You know? Yeah. No, Phil Plate. Phil Plate has a large pie chunk. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it happens on everyone's blocks. <laughs> we understand. No, I think one of the founding members was a University of Virginia grad student or undergrad, and he had left for grad school, and so he like emailed us, and that's how I heard about it. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, um, so, so then, if if not as many people at ASP heard about it, so ASP had a big cosmos in the classroom component, um, which is all about teaching astronomy um, at uh, I think primarily the undergrad level. So, is there a lot of room for this to be implemented in undergrad? Yeah, uh, well, so we'd we'd really like it to be used by more uh, teachers in their undergrad classes. So that's something we've thought about pushing a bit more. Um, so. Uh, three of the Astrobytes authors, so Nathan Sanders, uh, Elizabeth Newton, and Susanna Kohler, wrote a paper uh, last year, two years ago, about how you might use Astrobytes in the classroom. Um, oh. And so part of that, um, some of the ideas were like, you can have, you can assign reading that goes along with the class and have your students, um, you know, complete assignments and, and reflect on them. Or you could have uh, class projects where they use Astrobytes as a model, or they use Astrobytes to get background on uh, something that they write or something that they present as a group. Um, there's one other one which I'm blanking on, but I'll remember in a minute. I think, I just, I think you said this was Sanders and Kohler. Yes. Okay, great. I just found the paper okay. on archive. So you can read it in the in the, in the all paper. things. I found it on archive. Shocking. <laughs> We're gonna put that link again in the in the comments on the event page, mm -hmm. and it'll be in the show notes um, on the YouTube page after the broadcast. Um, so I'll put that. Yeah, so we're definitely really interested to hear um, if people do use it in the classroom, like how they're using it and how it works and, you know, what okay. could be better. Or if there's ways we can help, you know, we're always happy to pitch in with things. That's so. excellent. That's excellent. Um, so we've got a couple suggestions. Uh, so Michael Jobin has a bookmark. Yay! Uh, and he said, uh, Astrobytes are easy to chew on. <laughs> Which I guess is the point, right? Yeah. They're bite-sized astronomy. <laughs> Um, and uh, Guido Bibra suggests a um, a good mobile theme for reading on tablets. Uh, I don't know if you're involved in any of the web design stuff, but that's something to pass along. I don't know uh, what mobile theme you guys have. Um, and then a couple of people, so he and, and, and Charles Bell are saying that uh, you guys should get a plug from Universe Today. So hmm. That's we I, will. We would be happy for like, <laughs> today. We will. We, we can go pester Fraser Kane. <laughs> Separately. It's a great idea. Uh, to check that out, but yeah, um, and, and and within the education community as well, I think it, it's a it's a great thing. Um, and now I think you have a sister site within chemistry as well. Do you can you tell yes, us anything so, about Chembytes? Yes, Chembytes. I don't. I don't actually know any of the people from Chembytes, but there's Chembytes okay. and there's also uh, GeoSciBytes, which just came out of ComSciCon. Oh. Uh, they're trying to get themselves off the ground. Okay. So there are more bytes that are emerging <laughs> that do the same thing for other subjects. Um, so that's pretty exciting. But astronomy is the leader. Astronomy is the leader because like, astronomy is the coolest. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's kind of it's kind of expected. Uh, again, when I was in grad school, it was expected that you subscribe to the Astro PH email, daily email, and you at least read the title if not the whole yeah. abstract. <laughs> Um, so this is a really good part of, of graduate school training as well. Mm. So, very cool. Um, let's see. Wonder. Oh, if I should also. I can. I can also advertise that uh, we let undergrads do guest posts on our site Ooh, too. So if there's yes. any undergrads watching um, or interested, then they can submit a post and we'll we'll publish about their research. Um, so that doesn't have to be summarizing papers in the archive. It can be about what they're actually doing, and then oh, we'll, that's we'll very publish cool. that. Oh, that's very cool. So you hear that, undergrads, astronomy, go to Astrobyte, <laughs> not only read it, but see if you can do a guest post as well. Yeah, I was. That was one of the questions that flew out of my head because it's <laughs> one day. Do you have uh, undergrad writers? Um, have you done any? I know we've, somebody asked about videos. Have you thought of doing any kind of videos or podcast or? Um, um, well, this is the first video that Astrobytes has been on. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> mm. Yeah, thirty authors. 
Thirty dollars is a bit too many for a, a hangout, unfortunately. It would be a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but you could get ten of ten of you guys into a hangout, and that would be pretty cool. That would be um, pretty cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, do you have any um, teaching experience yourself, or have you thought about uh, doing teaching in astronomy? I do. So I've co-taught a class. I convinced my department that it would be a good idea, Excellent. and my co-teacher that would be a good idea. Let me co-teach a class. Um, so this was an introductory class for the astronomy majors. So they're freshman majors. It was their second semester of taking astronomy. Um, so it was nice for me because I could just pull in astrobytes references all the time when I was teaching. Um, so that was really, really fun. And I've also taught a summer class uh, in July, which was every day for five and a half weeks going through, you know, the introductory non-major astronomy material, nice. um, which was a lot, but it was pretty fun. Very cool. So you were able to bring that into your teaching then. So you have yeah. real-world examples then of bringing it into your teaching. I do. Yeah. I, could so have been, I could have taken it farther. Actually, so I'm also teaching a class starting in the fall. So I'm working with this uh, scholars program. It's for freshmen and sophomores, um, sort of kind of like an honors program. They do service and they have a colloquium. And so I'm teaching the sophomore colloquium, which is basically about astronomy and society and astronomy and the media. Um, and so one of their projects is going to be to go out and find an astronomy news story from the last year or so, mm -hmm. and then dissect like all the press releases it came from and see how the story has changed as it got propagated. Um, I love so, it. <laughs> so I was, one of our one of my suggestions for them will be to use astrobytes as a reference when they're trying to get background because a lot of these students are engineers; they don't really have an astronomy background, even mm -hmm. though it's an astronomy themed mm -hmm. program. Um, so we'll tr I'll try to push it on them a little bit. <laughs> we'll mm -hmm. see how that works. Have you seen it uh, this yourself when uh, comparing? I don't know if you've you've done a, if you've done a post on something that hit the press as well. How, can you compare what the press releases and news stories look like compared to what's actually in the research paper? Um, so I know some people who've done press release stories. Um, I mean, we definitely go into more detail than something like a press release, and we. Mm -hmm. I think try to be a little more like reserved about what we're saying about the science, you know, because press releases are very much trying to make it like as exciting as humanly possible. Yeah. And I think we do a little of that. Like I try to make the science sound exciting because we want our readers to be interested. Um, but I think we're a little more middle ground and we're not as extreme with these things. Um, and we show more of like the process. Like we really do try to show some of the science, like some of how it's being done. Um, and I think that's an important piece. Yeah, I think that's really important too, and I actually didn't think of it until you just said it now, but yeah, you've got a really nice showcase for the process of what it takes, you know, to get the results out there and, and just to get them from the data, yeah. um, how that goes, so that's really, um, really valuable, really valuable. Have you ever thought of bringing the level down um, even lower than undergraduate level? Have you thought about, like, writing some of these topics or pieces for I don't know, high school or even younger? Um, I don't know if we've ever really discussed it. I mean, we are, we're always curious to see, like, sometimes high school teachers say that they'll use astrobytes or they, they'll talk about wanting to use astrobytes. Um, so I don't really know how that goes because it's a little, like, it's hard because it's a little above their level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but it would be really interesting to do a, a like, yeah, a, a lower bar. <laughs> <laughs> astrobytes. Yeah, more, more general audience, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, because you guys are hitting a middle ground between the stuff that's being, you know, produced for the general public, although general public is a very broad term also. Uh, there's yeah. different, you know, levels of jargon knowledge within that, but you guys are hitting that middle ground in between, um, in between the, um, the stuff for the general public and stuff that's happening just back and forth be between the researchers, and so that's really important. Um, yeah. for, for bringing up the, the next generation of astronomers. Yeah, I mean, I think for high school students, like, it's a stretch for them, but I hope that they would they could get something out of it. You know, like, when yeah. even as a, you know, say an undergrad just reading a normal non astrobite paper, you're not getting the whole thing. You're, right, even right. I'm not getting the whole thing when I'm reading right. these papers. Oh, yeah. um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's the skill of being able to skim the parts that are confusing. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah the, the main pieces. Yep. Um, and we try to put in links and things like that for, uh, like, you know, I'm not going to explain spectroscopy in every post that talks about spectroscopy, but I will write a link to what it is. 
yeah. um, like a Wikipedia right. or something better. Or if you want to know, want to know more, or if they want to know, you want to know how they analyze this, you know, here's maybe <laughs> a link, a resource that you could follow up on. So. Yeah, and we're always really yeah. happy when people, oh, that was the fourth thing, I just remembered. So we're happy when people write comments um, below our posts. Oh. So that was the fourth suggestion for using it in the classroom, is to have people read Astro Wright's posts and then comment in the comment section, and then our, they can have dialogue with our authors and also with these other researchers who are reading the site, because we know we have this really broad audience, um, so it sort of pull other people in. So that's one option, you know, for people who it's a stretch, like we'd like them to write comments and ask us questions, and we can try to, you know, read rehash some things that are more confusing. <laughs> Have you guys ever had the um, the paper authors comment you guys, uh, comment or, or write to you guys on the site and say, hey, thanks for talking about our paper, or oh my gosh, you got everything wrong. Has <laughs> any of that ever happened? So the, actually the second astrobite that I wrote, the, the author of the paper did email me. And he was very happy that I'd done it. He was oh, like, this is great. And yeah. like, you know, I'm so happy that you covered us and I just found this. and. Yeah, that was awesome. And it's actually someone who I cite in my actual science paper because it was, again, like a galaxies kind of paper. Yeah, so yeah. I'm like, oh, I know you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that was fun. So occasionally, yeah, people will get good feedback from the authors. I don't think we've had any negative feedback from the authors. That's good. I don't know if that will ever happen, but it, it mm -hmm. hasn't happened yet. That's really good. <laughs> That's really good. Um, so I'm looking at the glossary page as well. So you've got some guides to things such as uh, astrophysical software, guide to graduate school, guide to citizen science efforts, which we love here, of course. <laughs> um, so there's different topics that uh, not maybe 101 level, but maybe 201 level um, that, that you cover as well. Are there any topics you guys haven't covered yet that you think are coming up that you'd um, like to write about? Well, so the glossary is something that people have wanted to develop a little bit more, so have like a, a fuller like description of these jargon terms that we use all mm -hmm. the time. Um, so that's a project that has been a little bit sidelined, or it got started and it didn't really um, get to full completion. So that might be something that comes up in the future is that we flesh out the glossaries. Um, and I know people would be interested in having like a class help them with that. So if there were a class of undergrads who wanted to contribute to the glossaries, I think that would be very welcome um, by us. So that's another another way you could use Astrobytes in the classroom. Help us write the glossaries. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. Um, so I will um, point out again, if you want to comment, have questions, uh, comments, anything like that, uh, you can use the Google Plus event page, the YouTube channel. Uh, I should go and check the Twitter hashtag, Learning Space. Um, let us know. Um, ask any questions of, of Alice about Astrobytes or um, uh, about uh, just kind of what we're talking about in terms of you know trying to get through the the, the astronomy literature and trying to get through the jargon and uh, presenting it to undergrads. Um, we have a comment from uh, Guido Vibra uh, found a, a an author in common between University and Astrobytes, so you guys have a connection <laughs> there. So yay! Um, connection. And do, is there is there a, uh, an active social media presence with Astrobytes as well? Uh, well, we do have a Twitter, um, so it's just at Astrobytes is our Twitter account, um, and that's been we have a Facebook page which has also been doing pretty well. And now I've got the Tumblr with the pictures, um, with the plots. So I'm very I think that's our Tumblr. that's our social media <laughs> <laughs> reach. As far as we don't have other social media, but those are the ones that come to mind. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm very excited about the Tumblr because yeah. like, you've got either historic looking at that, it's historical plots, and it's um uh, and things that are kind of like the importance, the big, the well known concepts. Um, and although it's not the pretty astronomy pictures that you know you might see in in the popular press, this is the really meaty, important stuff um, with the explanation. So that's really important as well. Just looking at a plot isn't always uh, obvious, right? And I think that was the idea: was that you know these plots are they have a lot of information in them, and people look at them and they don't understand you know what they're looking at or like what's all the, all the pieces. Um, so just, you can take a whole paragraph and explain a plot, and it's not boring, like there's a lot of stuff in the plot. Yeah, I think at least a paragraph. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, are the same 30 of you going to be like doing some of the astro plots then, or do you see I, that as more of a subgroup? It's a subgroup right now. I think there's yeah. about five or six people doing the astro plots on the okay. side. 
but anyone anyone in the group is welcome to do it, but yeah, it just sort of sprouted off mm-hmm. on the side. Oh. <laughs> side projects, very cool yes. side projects. Do <laughs> you ever find that you want to do your own diagram or something different with the charts and diagrams when you do your astrobite, uh, or do you kind of not mess with that part? I usually don't mess with that. Sometimes I'll take pictures from the internet, so that's something I do pretty frequently. Okay. You know, they don't, the papers don't necessarily have a picture of, like a, a press release picture of this galaxy that it's talking about. Um, so that's something that I'll add in most of the time. Yeah. Um, or, yeah, sometimes there's diagrams that I'll take from Google to show basic phenomena. <laughs> but for the most part, I'll stick with the plots in the paper and then, like, one image. Okay. You've got to have that, that artist conception of a blank. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or, you know, pretty space telescope image of the thing. Uh, yeah. yeah. To, as that yeah. eye-catching uh, connection. So. Yeah, the, the dots and lines are not always very eye-catching. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just thinking, boy, if somebody were good at, like, cartooning and things, you know, that always makes mm. things yeah. fun and, you know, people love to look at that and easy to read and all that. That would be kind of a fun project, too. That would be really cool. I don't know I if any of us are good at cartooning. I don't know. I'm not. <laughs> <Maybe> <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I don't know. <laughs> be me, but but maybe someone is good at fun. it. It would be cool. Oh, so somebody, yeah, somebody who's got a little extra time, which, you know, of course, you, yeah, you got to, you're not supposed to sleep or anything, so you can totally do that. Yeah, all your free time. Yeah, all your Should copious free time. Yes. <laughs> well, cool, so you so you have an a application process now, so I wanted to remind people, um, mm-hmm. so uh, if you are a grad student in astronomy and want to check it out, do uh, mm-hmm. go to Astrobytes and apply to write for the site. You get two years and then they kick you out. <laughs> They nicely kick you out. They nicely kick you out. Yes, you retire. You (laughs) move on to bigger things. (laughs) Have they read any uh, journalist ties? uh, Or are you guys all coming from the astronomy, uh, from the science background? I think we're all coming from the science background. Mm. Um, I know, like, Susanna wants to go in that direction, I believe, but um, I don't know anyone who came out of that direction. Okay. I think it's all... Yeah. yeah. yeah People anybody... have branched off. Yeah. You know, not all of us have stayed in like the astronomy PhD mm-hmm. track. But... Yeah. Yeah. There might be some people that find that they oh really like this writing stuff and they they you know go off in that direction. Yeah, I think that's yeah. great. I think you know, uh, ComSciCon. I think they probably talked about that a lot. You know, people are interested in doing this journalism, so they brought in people who do you know science communication and journalism and science writing, and so that's a really good opportunity for us as writers to you know meet these people who and already have our writing on the internet. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's really nice publicity for us yeah. as individuals. Excellent, excellent. Um, so I'm going to um, wrap up with a few announcements, but uh, I will, once I'm done with that, Alice, I'll give you the last few minutes to give us a party message about Astrobytes. Um, so uh, our typical schedule for the CosmoQuest Hangouts is um, Friday, is the Weekly Space Hangout. We'll be talking about um, the news stories, the, the, the big press releases <laughs> that are coming out, um, hosted by Fraser Kane of Universe Today, and there's... Um, a whole group of us that join in and bring our favorite space and astronomy stories um, to the discussion. So that's uh, noon Pacific on Friday. Uh, the virtual star party is Sunday night, 9 p.m. Pacific. Um, our astronomers will hook up their telescopes, their backyard telescopes, some amazing backyard telescopes, uh, up to their webcam so you can see the planets, you can see nebula, you can see all the cool stuff they're seeing in the night sky without leaving your house. It's like stargazing for lazy people. <laughs> Totally check out the virtual star party. Um, oh, and I had um, a, we had, ah, I have to find it. Uh, we actually have a sponsorship for the Hangout. So 365 Days of Astronomy uh, produces the audio from all these Hangouts and puts it out in podcast format. Uh, you can sponsor 365 um, episode or week of episodes, or you could now sponsor a Hangout. So let me bring up sponsorship information uh, wow. <laughs> for this week. <laughs> Uh, for this week's from George, let me grab this. Okay, so this hangout is sponsored by the Helio Chromologist to honor all the many professional astronomers who publicly present to us the makeup of the cosmos, sometimes known as cosmetology. So, <laughs> little winky face uh, from George, your friendly neighborhood Helio Chromologist. So thank you, George, for sponsoring this 
this hangout, uh, and it's it's subsequent audio production on 365 Days of Astronomy. So um, yeah, go to cosmoquest.org slash blog slash 365 Days of Astronomy, or just Google it, uh, and you can find out how you can donate to sponsor an episode um, uh, of the podcast, or now, the Hangouts. Uh, so that is really cool as well. Um, so yeah, that's that's our, our upcoming Hangout schedule. Um, Alice, why don't you leave us with some parting thoughts about Astrobytes and maybe what it's meant to you and your career path? Sure. So, I mean, Astrobytes has been a great experience for me. I mean, I like working with these other astronomy graduate students who are really enthusiastic about communicating science and being better at talking to undergraduates and the general public. Um, it's helped me a lot as a writer and as a science communicator. I mean, I got into it because I really enjoy teaching and I wanted to have as much teaching as possible. Um, but it's been really fun to reach such a wide audience of undergrads. I mean, so many people read these posts and I just feel like it's kind of empowering and fun to get to such a wide audience and talk about something that I really like. Um, so it's been great, and I've had a lot of fun doing it. I'm actually retiring now, so I oh. hope that other people will take my spot and are, uh, enjoy it as well. Um, but yeah, it's been really fun, and I think it's a great group of people who are doing it. I have a lot of admiration for the people who started it and the people who are, mm -hmm. who are still writing. So, yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah, they got the ball rolling, and it just uh, seems to have been picking up momentum the whole time, so that's really cool. Yeah. No, it's definitely oh. taken off and, and in a really good way. So. Yeah. I hope and it keeps going for a long time. <laughs> yes. We've been notified uh, by Guido that there is an Astro Bytes Google Plus page. I think I came across it when I was creating the event for this. So uh, get on get on your colleagues to revive that Google Plus page. Get themselves <laughs> in Fraser Kane Science Circle, because that's a good place to be. <laughs> so we'll share that out. We'll, we'll, we'll share that out as well. So um, thank you, Alice, so much for joining us. Yeah, um, yeah, thank you for having me, Alice. Yeah, awesome. yeah. Uh, and thank you, everyone, for watching this week's episode of Learning Space. Okay. Bye.